Morning. Radio shock jock Howard Stern drew 5,000 people to the flats this morning for his live broadcast. But the visit was only the beginning. Stern's show was knocked off the air for a while. And now Cleveland police say an employee of WNMS, one of the stations Stern came to make fun of, is in custody. He'll face possible charges of breaking and entering, disrupting public service, and possession of criminal tools in connection with the off-the-air incident. Now, we've been uh, working the phones on this one so far. Far, no comment from WMMS. New Center 8's Mike DePasquale was with Mr. Morning Mouth all morning long, and Mike is live in the flats with more on that uh, story and his own encounter with Howard Stern. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dale. Uh, first of all, WNCX, I spoke with Jerry Shirley. He did confirm that someone did cut the lines, actually physically cut the lines and sabotaged the Howard Stern show for a little bit this morning, Then they're going to let the authorities take care of that matter, but uh, I can guarantee you they will ask for uh, charges to be pressed to the fullest extent of the law. Now, aside from the slight delay this morning, there was plenty happening in here, and I'm going to roll the tape because you have to take a look for yourself. There was a crowd of about 5,000 people here. They were well behaved. Uh, they filled the parking lot of uh, Tiffany's right here in the flats to give Howard Stern a Cleveland welcome he won't soon forget. There were plenty of jokes, music, and of course insults hurled by Stern, the self-proclaimed king of radio here in town. The whole purpose of the gala event, as he called it, was to hold a funeral for the other radio stations. Howard and I had some interesting dialogue, as along with uh, some of his other guests. Howard, I'm Mike DePasquale with Channel 8 here in Cleveland. We're the CBS affiliate. You're going to stick with that name, or are we going to uh, anglicize that a little bit? Mr. DePasquale. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, sticking along the lines of the FCC. Are you four foot one inches, or Mike? <laughs> Is this the first midget uh, newscaster? The guy's three feet tall, he has four feet of hair. And then he wants to fight with you. He's going to fight with you. <laughs> Do you think there are some of the FCC that have a dark side and actually listen to you, maybe like in their closet? Or? Well, actually, uh, they're not in the closet. They all admit that they listen to me every day. They call it monitoring. They monitor the show every day. That, to me, is listening. Don't you think? It's the same thing, to call it monitoring. But uh, many of them have been quoted as saying they think I'm very smart. They think that I'm very funny. But yet they feel that they have to keep me in line. Can we support Howard? Howard supports me, and uh, I'm also here on behalf of any man victimized by sociopath, psychotic women. Why is Howard so popular? The reason is, is because he actually speaks his mind in a very uncluttered and unformatted way. Well, there you have it. There was an array of guests here today, plenty of music, like I said, jokes and parodies, and... We'll have more for you tonight on First Look at 5 and, of course, at 6 and 11. There was a lot happening today, and I'm sure this is an event that Clevelanders will not forget for a long time. Thank you, Mike. Well, Howard also took his radio show on the road this morning. After the press conference, I caught up with his entourage at the site of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where Hall director presented Howard with a plaque, which Howard thought was just a mic too small for the giant of media that he claims to be. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I was accept I was really ready to accept a much bigger plaque than this. What does it say? <laughs> it says the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum welcomes Howard Stern to Cleveland, June 10, 1994. Pretty non-committal. Dennis, you could have gone out a little bit on a, on a limb there, couldn't you? No expense was spared on this plaque. We want you to know. I just want you to know I'm very disappointed, Dennis, but nevertheless, you seem like a good man who got caught up in some politics. And with the promise of a larger plaque to come, Howard accepted and signed a beam, which will become part of the Rock Hall of Fame, set to open on Labor Day of 1995. Howard Stern says the game's over. He now rules the Cleveland radio roost. The celebration in front of a topless club was wild and raucous and raunchy, and silenced by this guy. We were off the air two minutes. What happened? I don't know. We were just talking to Joey, and we were off the air. I tell you. TV8 viewer Mike Canals caught the arrest on his home video camera. I watched the tape with Mike this afternoon. A broadcast wire was cut. The man, a WMMS employee, was found with wire splicers and a cutting tool. He made a, a comment to a person other than a police officer that uh, uh, led us to give further credence to the fact that he was the, the person that was responsible. According to people within earshot, the man arrested said, I did it for myself, not for the radio station. Sources say that may have been captured on a home videotape now in police custody. Reaction? Well, Stern put in a dig at WMMS. So now they're resorting to cutting the wires and all that, and it just made the broadcast even more intriguing. The fact that, you know, we were sitting there, and these guys are cutting wires. I mean, they're desperate. 
it's almost like, hey, we can't think of anything to put on the radio that can beat you guys, so maybe if we just cut off the signal, you know, maybe that will help. Maybe that'll do the trick. I can't believe that, that you know, just from a human being point of view, that, that anybody would have that kind of kindergarten mentality. Fact is, whoever tried to hurt Stern actually helped him, giving him more fodder, more attention. The man arrested faces three felony charges, one of which carries a maximum 10-year prison term. And this wasn't the only Stern interruption. Somebody, WNCX, suggests a rival radio station jam Stern's radio frequency, forcing him to broadcast with a cell phone. Whoever did the jamming managed to put obscenities over the airwaves. The FCC's investigated things Stern has done. Now it's investigating things done to him. Federal charges would be